The Watergate scandal continues to grip the nation as the infamous 18 and a half minute gap in the tape. There was a tape. Yeah, this tape was never subpoenaed. Why? Nobody knows it exists. Before I actually speak about the film, I want to talk about how you got involved in the film because I believe that you kind of, your agent pitched you, but I also understood that um, Lucky Milky, who you worked with on Blood Money, he was very kind of, he had a lot yeah. to do with kind of recommending you to, uh, to Dan, I believe, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I know. I actually kind of forgot about that until you just said that. But yeah, totally. I, I had heard about the movie of months before I actually got the job. Um, I had had an initial meeting and, and you know, how it often goes. I'm sure there are other people. And um, and I think I think Lucky did have a lot to do with me being the ultimate choice. Uh-huh. And what was it about the actual, uh, the actual role itself? Because it's, uh, I don't know, I don't know, it's just the, the look that you have, I don't know whether it's because of the outfit and everything, but you just, you're the perfect fit for the film. But what was it about you that kind of drew you to this, this specific story? Were you interested in the actual, the actual case? Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, were... I, think it's, I think it's something, that, I think that the, the kind of whole premise of the movie is something that speaks really um, neatly to the, the kind of political situation that we were living in for a few years in America. And I think that there's a reason why there's been kind of like a resurgence of interest in looking back at Watergate. And, um, and I think Connie in particular, I just found to be a really interesting character because she's a woman in the 1970s who's very driven and clearly has um, a, a real uh, ability that is just kind of stifled by the world that she lives in. And, and she can't really um, go beyond the level that she's currently at. And there's kind of that inherent frustration for her um, in what, she's been given access to in her life and um and then she makes this wild choice to to be a whistleblower and um and it and it all kind of unravels from there uh-huh and I, I know that Dan was he was kind of he was he, he didn't really want it to kind of be too timely in terms of Trumpian times no was that something that you spoke with Dan about and the rest of the cast to kind of make sure that it it, it didn't feel it felt timely but it also felt kind of that it would last yeah a totally. lot longer I mean, and also it, in different in different places I've written that in Spain yeah. they kind of compared things to kind of Franco and things like that was that something yeah. that you discussed before going on to on to set yeah I mean I think that I think that what um Dan has done too with the movie it's very open-ended I think it really is there's a lot of things that you can take away from the film there's a lot of um opinions that you can have that are very different than I think what other people would take away from it and um, it's kind of not, it's not giving the audience a clear sort of like, this is what we think you should think, um, yeah. which is, you know, what makes a, a movie last uh, beyond its time is, you know, being kind of having an opinion and, and letting the audience figure out what their opinion about that is. Uh -huh. And then in terms of influences, I was reading that um, Danny kind of dubbed the film, it was like a mix of kind of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and uh, Three Days with the Condor. Did you speak about influences and kind of the, the tone that he wanted to go for, that they wanted to go for in the film? Um, I mean, I don't really think we did. <laughs> I mean, well, we shot this now a few years ago. Yeah, it was ago, quite, a, so quite a rush job, no? Because I think you, 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 I think you, you had kind of a three hours journey from New York to the set now to kind of prepare with your, your co-star. Yeah. It was kind of it was all rushed, but did you actually kind of speak about any specific influences at all, no? We, we didn't really talk a lot about, um, we didn't talk a lot about that, but I think that we were just, I think we were kind of on the same page. Like it was just, it was one of those things where I think he was excited by what I was bringing and, and I was excited by kind of the shots that he was setting up. And I think it, there was just a nice synergy there from the, the get go. And, and, you know, I think that, I think some directors work more like this where they, they have picked the person who they think is right and so then okay. you're kind of given the space that um that they want to give you to just kind of you know to play in that and that's kind of the most that's the most fun when you are just given the space to kind of explore the things that you're interested in exploring and so, Connie's I mean, a great character to to play with oh, that's fantastic time. yeah but to, to create Connie what kind of influences did you I mean I imagine you kind of went back and looked at maybe 70s characters and things like that to kind of create some kind of amalgamation of yeah. who you wanted it to be how did you go about that yeah i mean i didn't actually really watch a lot of stuff um no. to kind of, to to get ready for connie i i think i was more interested in um in kind of understanding and exploring what 
her life would have been like um, in that time, kind of like what her, what her experience of the world was um, and, and understanding what would have led to her kind of making this choice to be a whistleblower, especially because she's kind of um, uh, an, an unexpected whistleblower in some ways. Um, and, and I also, I, you know, I think that she's a fun character and I don't even, I didn't even think about this at the time, I don't think, but one of my favorite movies ever is To Die For with Nicole Kidman. Right. And, you know, it's like not the exact same time, but it's of the same sort of time. And I think there's something kind of actually in that where, you know, it's very different characters, but there is maybe, um, maybe there was an unconscious sort of awareness of, of that in, in, uh -huh. in my, uh, in my Connie. And also, you know, I grew up watching a lot of um, old movies and I'm sure that all fed yeah. into it. I give you this tape, you splash it all over the cover of the Times, it gets traced back to me in a heartbeat. You win the Pulitzer and I get indicted. No. I think there's a motel nearby, the Silver Sands. We go there, we listen to it, we leave. Oh, Caesar, anything is possible, young lady. I don't know how, but they hey, know we're here. Hey, who is they? And we, we can't not talk about the outfit and the hairstyle. Was that something that you were able to decide I want to look like this I wanted and did you get to kind of choose your wardrobe or was that kind of handpicked yeah our you? costume designer was fantastic um yeah. she made I think almost that entire costume um by hand because uh, Dan was very clear about color I think and kind of knew what color every character was and and uh Connie was blue and yeah, it was like um, blues and beiges yeah each character I sort of spotted that each character is kind of very specific Colors, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and so we were at like um, I guess it was maybe her costume place, and she, you know, we were kind of trying on outfits and and it was it was really fun to to find um to find Connie in that way and um and then to have you know these very uh beautiful costumes be kind of made for her because you know she really did she made all of all of them. Um mm -hmm. and they're just gorgeous. Well, they're fantastic, yeah. Brilliant. And then, so I want to talk a little about the uh, the preparation because I, I believe you didn't have a great deal of time to rehearse. So a lot of the time that you got to rehearse with your with your co-star, I understand was kind of the three hour journey to the, the actual motel that actually exists. So it's a real motel. And then a little bit of time you got to spend actually at the motel. How did you prepare? Because it's, it's quite a complex relationship that you kind of create in that, those 90 minutes. So it can yeah. be easy to kind of prepare traveling there and, and just kind of being on set, no? Yeah. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't travel together. We definitely um, oh, traveled didn't. separately. Um, but we, I mean, I think that, I think that we were lucky in the sense that, um, you know, we, we shot vaguely chronologically, which is, doesn't always happen. And also our characters don't know each other at the beginning. And so there isn't any like extensive previous relationship. Um, and I think that's oftentimes very helpful when you're shooting um, uh, anything where you, you know, it's, it's hardest if you're supposed to be like a couple that's been married for 50 years or whatever. Yeah. But if you are, if you just are like kind of coming into the relationship fresh um, on the page, it makes it a little bit easier. And, and John's great. And, and we kind of just, I think, got lucky in a sense that we both um, enjoyed working together a lot and kind of had a just inherent chemistry um on screen and and off screen and that goes a long way and yeah. and kind of you know making something fun and dynamic together yeah i mean the the the, uh, the performances feel really authentic in this film um good was was that something that you you specifically went about yourselves i was reading that danny was i think it was was it robert altman he kind of he used him kind of the, this idea of of overlapping conversations to make it kind of really feel as plausible and authentic as possible. Was that something that you discussed before, especially before the one specific scene where you're sat around the table? That was kind of, it was very Reservoir Dogs type. It was perfectly executed. Was yeah. that something you really, you really kind of choreographed, choreographed with Dan beforehand very kind of meticulously? Yeah, I mean, on an indie, there's there's rarely a lot of time to do anything. So I don't, I don't think we had, a. We, there was certainly not a lot of um, time to, to make sure things were going to go perfectly according to plan, but but I think we got just got lucky in the sense that you know everyone everyone knew their stuff and um, was just ready to go and 
um, that is, you know, that goes a long way in, in making that work. And there is, you know, it is like a, a madcap kind of romp, which um, allows you to kind of have these situations that feel a little bit like dissonant in some way, which is, which is really fun. Um, and doesn't need to be like, you know, it's not about like perfectly timed comedy. It's more about sort of um, the strangeness of the humor. We need to listen to the tape. You know what to do. Who is it, dear? Oh, it's a newlywed couple. We brought our player from home and it was broken. We were wondering if we could borrow yours. 18 and a half minute gap. Maybe no one is supposed to hear us. What is happening? Talking of strange humans, this relationship that you share, not just with John, but when you meet Catherine and Bondi Curtis Hall, yeah. that relationship is just fantastic. I mean, you just play off each other brilliantly well. Um, it must have been fantastic to work with these two veterans, but at the same time, it must have been quite complicated to get this balance because they've kind of got this World War II era romance and all these kind of backgrounds. <laughs> and then you've got this very kind of 70s, where yeah. you're trying to kind of give this facade of the 70s relationship that you share. That must have been really fun, but really complicated at the same time to kind of juxtapose those two very different yeah. romantic kind of situations, no? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it was the, uh, Kathy and, and Bondi came, I think, after a week and a half of John and I working together. And so we already kind of like had the thing that we thought we were doing. And then um, Kathy and Bondi came in and were like on a different planet. And we were like, what? <laughs> and I think it just, um, I think it just worked because John and I were like, what, what are we, what? We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> and I think that that kind of, um, I think that that dynamic served the the dynamic between the the characters really well um, because John and I had had our own little like bonding for all of those days of shooting and then we were just in a totally different world and I think it I think it, it works really well. Uh -huh. and, I, mean, did, I mean I imagine you didn't get too much time to rehearse with them but did they kind of throw a spanner in the works and try and kind of ex surprise you in the way that we see you kind oh, of get definitely. surprised? Oh yeah. definitely. Oh yeah I think that they delighted in that. I think that they, they, you know, I think Kathy has a great sense of humor and, and, you know, I think that they were, they were loving, loving, you know, coming in and, and just making crazy, crazy fun happen. So was there a lot of improvisation involved? I, I mean, I was ready. I, to think, I do believe kid, I, John and I did not do a ton of improv. I believe Kathy's character did a lot of improv, I, I, but yeah. I, again, this is a, we shot it about two years ago. And so I'm not, I don't, can't totally remember, but, um, but if I remember correctly, I think, I think Kathy really enjoyed improv and, and it was just kind of great. Cause you know, it all fed into the, the kind of chaos of, of those, of those characters in, in our world. Uh, so would there be a lot of uh, outtakes and extras for the, the DVD when it comes out? Or? You know, hopefully, hopefully you'll have to ask Dan about that. Hopefully the camera was rolling. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I want to talk about the um, kind of the, the romantic elements with your character because it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's a, um, I've never seen a romance like that before. I mean, I don't want to give too much away, obviously, but obviously it's kind of this, this, this you, you can't trust this guy. And then it's, it all kind of comes up on, on the audience all of a sudden. That must have been quite complicated. I mean, you said that you didn't have much time to rehearse. That must have been really quite complicated. I imagine you maybe even surprised yourself when you kind of came to filming those scenes, no? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it, you know, I think it comes out of the, the heightened um, life or death situation that they feel that they're in. You know, I think that it's, it's in some ways sort of a, a well, if we're going to die tonight, might as well situation. Yeah. Um, and, and I think there's just also the actual, like, excitement of the thing that they might have on their hands you know like that I think it's I think like the whole situation feeds into the actual like romance of the between the two characters because you know I think it's it's largely propelled by uh the excitement that's actually coming from the situation not even the actual chemistry between the two people um, which I think we, you know, I'm sure we all can relate to, you know, it's like the context is everything. Yeah. And then to, um, obviously to add salt to the wound, obviously uh, you were filming and then COVID threw a spanner in the works. 
Yes. And, yes. But at the same time, John, uh, sorry, John, Dan, he kind of made the most of it. And uh, he, he edited like 80, I think I read it, I read, he edited yeah. about 80% of the film and then yeah. rewrote some of the ending. So did, that must have kind of complicated things for you, you no know, kind of expecting to go back and to play Connie and then realize that Connie was going to do something different than you'd expected. Was it easy to slip back yeah, into the I don't, role? I don't, don't think anything, it? I don't think anything changed that particularly affected the trajectory that I was already on with Connie. Um, I can't totally remember um, what the, what the specific things were that did change, but I mean, I think it was really helpful that he was able to kind of get into the edit before he finished shooting and, and kind of see what the, the dynamics were and, and then go from there in terms of like what, you know, what the last pieces were that needed to be put into place. Um, because some of the last pieces that we shot too were the stuff with the hippies and um, and all of Richard Kind's stuff we shot um, right. after that too. And so it was kind of interesting because we had like these new people coming in um, to a movie that was, you know, otherwise so kind of self-contained. Um, and so it, it already kind of felt like a different, a different movie, but I think it would have felt like that regardless, mm -hmm. because we were kind of having those moments that were already so um, kind of outside of, you know, so weird and, and already outside of what the, you know, main narrative arc uh -huh. is. And was it simple for the, uh, for the cast to keep their, uh, their figure nice and trim when you got back? Because I read that Dan, <laughs> Dan brought plenty of uh, bread and, and treats for you when he came back now because he'd got into cooking. He over did, there. he did. <laughs> He did. I mean, John had a baby. Uh, you know, there was there were a lot of changes that happened um, in the intervening time. Uh, and there was a lot of bread eaten and largely not all of it was Wonder Bread, although I did eat a lot of Wonder Bread. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even ask you about the bread because it's just so complicated for me to, for people watching. I know, I know. You, you'd, yeah. you'd have I need to, to see it to believe it. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Willow, it's been a pleasure to speak to you like always. Um, I wish you the best of luck when the film comes out and I can't wait to speak to you again sometime soon because uh, I know you've been pretty prolific over the last few uh, few months, especially I know you're working on Mike Flanagan's uh, latest, which I can't wait to see. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully we'll speak I am to you right again. Now. I'm loving speak it. Speak to each other soon. Yeah, amazing. All right. Thanks very much. Take care. Okay. Have a good day. Uh, you too. All the best. Cheers. Sure. Soak it up. It'll soon be over. Well, 30 years from now, I want to be remembered, Bob. You will, sir. Well, that's no good, Al.